Next, we have a public hearing on the purpose of discussing Ordinance 784, an ordinance of the Town of Easton prohibiting retail establishments in the town from providing customers with single-use disposable plastic bags and providing for exemptions from the prohibition and penalties for violations. This is a public hearing basically on the plastic bag ordinance. <laughs> if you are interested in speaking about, please come to the podium, state your name, and please speak clearly because we do have people watching from home. Yes, uh, my name is Jeff Harrison. I'm a lifetime resident of Talby County. I live at 21404 Wharf Road in Tillman Island, 21671. Um, I'm also president of the Talbot Waterman Association. And uh, I'm here uh, to kind of give a different perspective on these bags. Uh, I've uh, I worked the waters of Talbot County for the past 45 years, probably as much as 300 days a year. And I get to see things some other people don't see, and especially with these bags. Uh, you notice going up or down the road when I come to Easton, I think coming up the road we've seen about a dozen of them out in the fields, hanging in trees and things like that. But what people don't realize is that Talbot County has over 600 miles of shoreline. And so those bags that you see in those fields and hanging in that tree very likely end up in the water. And I'm here to tell you that they do. Um, when I was contacted by this group that particular day, I had caught two of them on my wheel on my prop. Now, they're not hard to kick off. I don't have to haul out or anything like that. They come off. You do have a little bit of problem. They're really cheaply made, and you get some in your cutlass barren, and it can wear it out over time. But that's not really the problem with them. First off, they call them single use. Let, let's get for real. Some of them you don't even get one use out of when you get them in the store. And uh, so anyway, like I said, that day I had seen two. And we tend to see more, especially in the last four or five years. Um, it's kind of like when they get in the water, it's almost like the wind blowing them around on land while we have currents. And of course, they're spread around in the water. But they tend to go to the deeper waters we see most of them in the summertime. Uh, we think that's because of boat activity. Uh, these bags also, they don't necessarily sink right to the bottom. They kind of stay in the water column, and that's why you catch a lot of them in your prop and in your other thing. There's nothing like going down your trot line and seeing something white and dipping down and hitting one of those bags and pulling your shoulder out of joint. Um, so my whole point is, the, the reason, a lot of reason people come to the Eastern Shore is because of the Chesapeake Bay. And as a waterman, we consider ourselves frontline environmentalists. There's no one that wants the bay and, of course, the Choptank River here to be uh, clean more, uh, than watermen do. We're out there. We see what goes on. And I'm telling you, over the last four or five years, these bags have become a nuisance. They don't disappear. They don't dissolve. They're there, and they're building up, and they're building up in these places. And now that summertime has started. Even though the gas prices are high, last weekend there were plenty of boats out. <laughs> Over the last two years, and I guess it was partly because of COVID, people have taken back to the water. Now, will the gas prices slow them down some? I don't know. But I am here to say that we have a problem with these bags. Um, I know that 10 or 11 year, years ago, we partnered with the Chamber of Commerce, I think, to get some uh, totes. and. Uh, that, that was a good idea. It was even back then we were seeing problems, but now that problem has increased, I would say, tenfold. And like I say, they don't go away. Eventually, maybe they go out into the ocean. I don't know. But right now, we have a serious problem with them, and I'm just here to let everybody know that. Thank you, so, Mr. Harrison. Sure. It. Captain, sure. can I ask you one question? Yes. If you, if you had the option, would you want to see this as a county-wide ban? Actually... I think two or three years ago, they tried to do it in the whole state, and it didn't. It failed. But That's yes, I mean, what I'm telling you is, I don't understand how we come to this country it keeps making things cheaper and cheaper and cheaper until they're not usable. And that's what happens with these bags, as far as I'm concerned. And then, like I say, they're so cheap that they float in the water column. They're not on the bottom. They don't stay there. They're, they're floating around. And so you see them more and more all the time. So they're definitely a problem. Thank you. Sure. Thank you.
Madam President, Mr. Mayor, members of council, my name is Alan Gerard. I'm the Eastern Shore Director with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. Good to follow my friend, Mr. Harrison, on the same side of an issue here. Uh, I wanted to uh, just summarize the science of plastic bags and the impact uh, not only on the Chesapeake Bay and water quality, but also on human health. Actually look to the Chesapeake Bay Program Scientific Technical Advisory Committee. This is a body that advises the Bay restoration effort in terms of science and research to help inform policy decisions. They met back in 2019. They evaluated research on the impact of plastic bags to water quality, to wildlife habitat. And I just wanted to summarize some of the studies that they were able to review. One study finds that microplastics are detectable at every single one of the Bay Watershed's 126 water quality monitoring stations. This means microplastics are not only in our bay, they're throughout our rivers and streams as well. A second study finds that oysters exposed to microplastics increase algal clearing rates. This means that plastic ingested by oysters trick them into thinking that they're getting too much food when in fact they're not getting enough. This situation can easily starve our already threatened oyster population. A third study finds that at every one of the bay's watersheds, 516 major wastewater treatment plants, an average of 4 million mi microparticles are discharged per facility per day. These plants are designed to catch some large plastics, but they're not designed to filter microplastics out of the effluent that are discharged to our rivers and streams. A fourth study finds that microplastics attract all three species of Vibrio. This is the so-called flesh-eating bacteria that cause diseases in humans. Microplastics easily pick up bacteria like Vibrio, putting human and environmental health at risk. A fifth study finds that microplastics are detectable in wild sea bass that populate the southern portion of the bay. For anyone that eats these fish, microplastics put their health at risk. And then finally, for the email I sent you a couple weeks back, microplastics for the first time are now found in human blood, with scientists observing the tiny particles in 80% of the people tested. Plastic is not good for human health. So plenty of science out there that points in the direction of what to do. You know, in your seats, you are about balance. What is going to be the best for all citizens and health in our economy and the environment? And, and it's a lot of give and take, and I appreciate the, the tough <coughs> jobs that you have up there. Um, and it just reminds me of uh, uh, compromise not even compromise, just what, what is convenience here? So we have the human and environmental health impacts, which I just summarized for you, balanced against really what it sounds like is convenience. And so when I think back to some of the policy issues I've worked on, you know, way back, this is probably pushing 20 years ago, when we had the flush fee adopted, this was the $5 a month fee that goes on your utility bill. That money is used to upgrade the state's major wastewater treatment plants. I think Easton was the first or one of the first to benefit from that fee passed in the early administration, 2003. Some of you are nodding, remember that. Uh, you know, that $5 a month fee, you know, a gallon of milk, that was inconvenient. But that policy decision is responsible for the progress we're making on bay restoration now. We're not out of the woods, but Wastewater plant upgrades are making a huge difference on water quality in the Chesapeake Bay. Inconvenient cost spread among uh, uh, every Maryland resident, and now we're seeing progress in water quality. This bag ban is another one of those inconvenient things. Yes, you got to bring your tote bag, but you know, in terms of the benefits, you know, it, it's clearly a decision that you can make for the environment, for uh, the health of our citizens, for, and for all of Maryland. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gerard. Hi. My name is Brooke Ensminger, and I'm a student at Easton High School. The over 50 trillion pieces of plastic in the ocean makes the water an unbeatable obstacle course for in the inhabiting animals. Plastic waste alone causes the deaths of 100 million marine animals every year. Furthermore, a majority of the fish we as humans consume for meals have ingested pl plastic themselves. That means when we eat fish, we are also consuming plastic. By allowing plastic to be in the ocean, we are circling it back into our bodies, proving that it negatively affects all aspects of the environment. 
A study from the University of Plymouth in 2017 found that single-use plastic bags were broken down by a microscopic amphipod, commonly known as a beach flea, pretty easily. The amphipods were able to break down a single plastic bag into 1.75 million microscopic pieces, therefore contributing to the microplastic pollution in our water ecosystems. Another study from Macquarie University found that chemicals leached from common plastic products such as gray plastic bags made from high density polyethylene has a severe impact on the species Prochlorococcus, a photosynthetic bacterium that lives in the ocean. This species is important because it contributes to the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. The study found that exposure to these chemicals not only stunted the growth of these organisms and altered their genes, but it also impaired their ability to produce oxygen. Single-use plastic bags are a silent killer in our local bay as well as in oceans internationally, but the solution to all this unnecessary cruelty is not far from attainable. Limiting the distribution of single-use plastic bags by retailers can make a huge impact on the environment and the pa plastic pollution that enters the bay each year. Sure, plastic bags may seem more convenient and more affordable, causing it to be an easy decision for businesses. But, the sol but the, while the real cost is not on the businesses, it is on the innocent sea animals who are just trying to survive in their environments. Real change can be acquired much faster with a limit on plastic bags and a regulation on businesses' use of them. Just one small action can make a huge difference on entire ecosystems. We often focus on plastic pollution impacts on larger species such as turtles and seabirds. What is not often discussed is how much this pollution impacts the smallest yet incredibly important species in our aquatic food webs. If we can make a difference by limiting the amount of plastic produced and used here in Talbot County, we can make a positive impact on our local waterways, our bay, our oceans, and our planet. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mayor Willie and Pre Council President Cook and Council members, thanks um, for letting me speak. Members of Plastic Free Easton have been very busy speaking with fellow citizens and with business owners about the proposed ordinance. We feel, we feel there's lots of support out there for a plastic bag ban, including among local businesses. So uh, here, here are some voices from the Easton business community who couldn't be with us tonight, but want you to know they support the proposed ban. Hi there, I'm Joanne Brown. I have just a mere trading post here in Easton. Um, my reason for banning the plastic bag is you look in the sea and look at all the trash. I watch animals that have died and you open them up and they see all trash of plastic bags. All the disaster that's done in the trees with the birds and with, with all the animals. It's a sad thing. I'd like to see plastic bags no longer be a part of it. My name's Eric Levinson. I'm the owner and chef and innkeeper here at Hummingbird Inn. And we're supporting the no plastic uh, uh, approach here for the town of Easton and Talbot County. Um, and because we feel very strongly about supporting uh, the world um, and making it a cleaner and better place. Uh, we do everything here to lower our carbon footprint um, as an inn in terms of everything we do here and I think that it's important for uh, the world, for the animals, for uh, our waterways which is another important thing for this area um, to keep them clean and plastic bag free and there's so many other alternative solutions that are better for, uh, for everyone, that uh, the plastic bag uh, doesn't really need to exist anymore. Hi, I'm Martha Witte Suss. I'm the branch manager at Long and Foster Real Estate here in the St. Michael's Road um, office here in Easton. And I personally and professionally support 
a ban on plastic bags in Easton. Why not, you know, be good stewards to the earth now instead of later? Something that we should have done a long time ago. Um, I have been recycling plastic bags for years um, and I have to pull them out of the recycle bin so that they can get put in the right place. It's such an important thing to make sure that our plastic goes into the right place. Currently, I've gotten rid of all detergent bottles and all that sort of thing. So, you know, I work really hard to reduce my carbon footprint at the office and at home. And I think that you have to start somewhere. So I implore you all to really consider doing it now and not put off something that needs to be done now. It should have been done 10 years ago. But thanks a lot for listening and understanding. Hi, I'm Emily, the owner of Piazza Italian Market here in Easton, and I support the plastic bag ban. I recognize that plastic bags cause a lot of damage to the environment, and I've never used plastic bags at our store. I also feel that there are a lot of easy solutions now available as alternatives to plastic bags, whether they're compostable bags or reusable bags or paper bags there are alternatives that are readily available and affordable, and I just don't see any reason to need plastic bags here in Easton anymore. My name is Amy Haynes and I am the owner of Out of the Fire Restaurant in Easton, Maryland. And I am definitely in support of Plastic Free Easton. Um, I think this is a small sacrifice we can all make um, that can get us thinking about the larger picture of what an insidious role that plastic does play in our lives and um, how it's kind of been forced upon us. And um, these large corporations have created these products and then um, laid it upon our feet to clean it up um, when indeed they should be partners in helping us um, reduce the amount of plastic in, um, in our ecosystems. And additionally, I think that um, the legislation is really important to, and I, obviously we're a culture that doesn't like to be told what to do, but I think that um, the ordinance, the legislation are avenues for us to uh, assist each other in making a change. I'm Sue Hauser, and I have brought a very low-tech demonstration tonight. This is a jar of water that I borrowed from a tributary to the Tread Avon River. It is authentically murky. The plastic bag in this water, I put there myself. However, as Mr. Harrison attests, and as you can find agreed with anybody who's ever done a stream cleanup, plastic bags are ubiquitous in our waterways. The other thing you might notice is that the murky water somewhat disguises the existence of that plastic bag. This poses a problem for marine organisms. Some of them become entangled in the plastic because they just don't see it, and others might confuse it with food and ingest it. 
So these are just two examples of the macro level problems that plastic bags pose to our marine environment. So please put those two reasons on your list to vote for Ordinance 784. <laughs> Is that the right number? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Hobbs. <laughs> Mayor Willie and members of the council, we at Plastic Free Easton support Ordinance 784 with two modifications. And by the way, I'm Elaine Tama and I live at 8458 Avery Farm Road, Easton, Maryland. First, add the definitions of single use and reusable bags as follows. A reusable carry out bag means a bag with stitched handles that is specifically designed and manufactured for multiple reuse and is made of cloth or other washable fabric or a durable material suitable for multiple reuse that is not made of plastic film and a single use disposable bag is a bag that is not reusable and I'll illustrate to you. This is a reusable bag. This is Acme, where I shop. It has handles on it. The handles are stitched. It can be, it can be used over and over and over. I've had this for at least two years now, and I, I use it every single week. This is a plastic bag that in other jurisdictions that have passed laws, some stores have called these bags reusable. Well, the reason they say they're reusable is because they're a little bit thicker and they do have a handle, but they're made out of plastic, the polyethylene stuff, and most people are not going to use these over and over again. They're really not much more than a single-use bag. <clears throat> the second thing we'd like to add to this ordinance is language mandating that retailers charge a fee for paper bags. We support this because, number one, it levels the playing field and retailers won't undercut competitors by offering free paper bags. Paper bags are more costly than plastic bags, and it is better for the environment since paper bags are made from trees, and having a customer pay for paper bags will reduce the number of trees used. And I just wanted to make one more statement about enforcement, because that has come up previously. The first step in, educate, in not needing enforcement is educating the public and retailers about the new ordinance. This greatly reduces the need for any kind of enforcement. This is got done through good communication and a good rollout plan. The rollout is usually a six-month period from the date the law passes until it takes effect. The steps are, number one, clear notice on the town website about the requirements for retailers and what shoppers can expect with questions and answers. There's some great websites out there that we could use as examples. Baltimore and Delaware. They have clear graphics. They have links for retailers. They're, they clearly state what requirements are for retailers, what bags are exempted. They've got frequently asked questions. They even have downloadable stickers and posters that these stores can download and print and put in their, in their windows or at the checkout counters. Uh, the posters could be things like, did you bring your bag? Uh, the f other thing is the town should send a letter to retailers with a name and contact information of the person in charge. And then we would like to see partnering with the Chamber of Commerce and the Eastern Economic Development Corporation to get out the word. We would like to see information sessions held for retailers. And we at Plastic Free Easton would like to partner with you in the town during this rollout period by sitting out in front of the grocery stores 
and giving out brochures and answering people's questions. And we've actually already talked to the managers of many of the grocery stores about this, and they're more than happy to accommodate us. We've learned from other places that now have laws in place that enforcement is easy and the only enforcing is done when there is a complaint. I interviewed Mr. Eric Brown, who's the Director of Housing and Code Enforcement in the city of Westminster, Maryland. Westminster is a city which is about exactly the same size as Easton, 17,000 Easton, Westminster, 20,000. He told me, he said, first, you just need to educate the public and retailers about the ordinance. Make sure everyone understands the law and the time frame after, of when it will be enacted. After it's in place, randomly visit places of business. If they are not in compliance, we simply communicate in person and by mail and inform them of potential consequences. Notification works in nine out of 10 cases. He said the Chamber of Commerce was very helpful there in helping to get out the message. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Thomas. Good evening, Good evening. President Cook, Mayor Willie, Councilman, members. I am Amy Kreiner. I am president and CEO of the Talbot County Chamber of Commerce. I might add, I've had many uh, conversations with uh, Ms. Tama. And um, however, speaking on behalf of the board of directors of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, we wish to express our opposition to Ordinance 784, banning single-use plastic bags by our local retail establishments. The mission of the Talbot County Chamber of Commerce is twofold to serve as the collective voice of businesses in Talbot County and to protect those businesses from potentially onerous actions proposed by governing bodies. We feel this legislation places yet another unfair burden on our retailers, particularly small businesses, at a time when they are facing numerous challenges, such as the continued impacts of COVID-19, rising inflation, record high fuel costs, and ongoing worker shortages and supply chain delays. As president and CEO of the Talbot Chamber, I personally visited over 25 small businesses located in Easton to inquire as to the potential impact of this ordinance. What I learned was that while many of our retailers offer paper bags as part of their marketing and branding efforts, those that offer plastic bags do so as an added layer of protection against carry out food leaks and spills. Nearly all felt this legislation was overreaching and intrusive. Not one stated that they would pass the cost of bags on to their customers. They would instead absorb it <coughs> as the ever escalating cost of doing business. The Talbot Chamber of Commerce is not insensitive to environmental conservation efforts, but feels this legislation does not achieve what it is intended to achieve. According to the language of this proposed ordinance, plastic bags would still be allowed for many uses as outlined in subsection B. Therefore, it is still possible for improperly recycled or disposed of bags to find their way into our streams and waterways. Instead, we recommend increased informational campaigns encouraging the public to reduce their use of single-use plastics whenever possible and on the virtues of recycling the bags they do consume. Count on the Talbot Chamber to be an active community partner on these efforts. For example, the majority of plastic bags recycled in receptacles throughout Maryland and the Mid-Atlantic are purchased by Trex Company Incorporated out of Winchester, Virginia for their wood alternative composite decking material. The next Trex Community Recycling Program offers communities an opportunity to challenge their residents to collect 500 pounds of plastic bags during a six-month period. If you've successfully reached that goal, Trex will donate an eco-friendly composite material bench for you to proudly display in town. Beautification, awareness, rallying the community towards a common goal all seem like win-win scenarios. 
And I might add that uh, the chamber does actually offer reusable bags that we had printed with Shop Small and uh, support chamber members. And uh, Al can attest that I am uh, an avid recycler, the kind that took stuff out of other people's trash cans and took it home to recycle. Uh, but we do feel that the business owners should have the opportunity to make the choices as to what they're offering. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Can I make one statement that this time I come to the podium and state your name? Hmm? Um, yes, I have. I talked to Amy. We had a really nice long conversation about this. Um, on the Trex uh, campaign idea, um, the way that works, um, according to what I read, you would need to get 500 pounds of bags in six months, would be about 40,500 bags that would have to be weighed by whoever is, is running the c campaign. You have, to, you have to keep weighing these bags. And then you have to transport them to Winchester, Virginia, which is 160 miles about three hours of driving. And then you would have to have, um, I, I'm assuming you'd have to set up some, some receptacles around town to encourage people to, to get those 40,500 bags um, in, the, in the six months. We don't, we don't really support that because we're, we're trying not to actually encourage more bags than we already have. Um, the other thing I wanted to say on the um, <clears throat> food leaks and spills, we, we do have the exemptions in the bill for certain kinds of things that would be leaking and spilling, like fresh fish and fresh meat. Um, and um, the other thing was, let me think, um, w when Amy, Amy did her survey and businesses said they would not charge would never charge or would not charge or think of charging for a paper bag. Uh, this is why we, we really support the idea of mandating that they charge for a paper bag. So the businesses don't have to make that decision and, and they get a leg up in terms of their own costs. Thank you. Hello, my name's Kathy Hostetter. Um, I live at 12335 Mill Creek Lane, Y Mills. I've been a resident of Talbot County for about 36 years now. And I just came here tonight to listen. I really was not prepared at all to comment, so if I sound a little disoriented. Um, I just wanted to state a couple of facts that I had looked up um, in my research of plastic. Um, Plastic bags are derived from fossil fuels, and 14 plastic bags are equivalent to the amount of gas it takes to drive one mile. Um, plastic bags on the average are used for 45 minutes, but yet they take 450 years to decompose. As Mr. Gerard mentioned, they don't completely uh, degrade but they become microplastics that continue to pollute the environment and our bodies. 87% um, of plastic bags end up in a landfill. They're not recycled. And many times it can accumulate so much plastic in a landfill, it can take up to 1,000 years to degrade in the landfill. Um, I just hope that the convenience aspect is overlooked and we can be forward looking here in the town of Easton for future generations as many cities and states across our country have already done. Americans use an average of 360 plastic bags per person per year. People in Denmark use four plastic bags per person per year. So that's pretty incredible. Um, and I guess that's all I have to say. I just hope that you all can look toward the future and not 
let the convenience aspect get in the way. Thank you very much. Mayor Willie and council members, uh, my name is Mary Yancey. Um, I'm a member of Plastic Free Easton and I've been a resident of Easton for over 40 years. I want to thank you for your service to the town of Easton and for considering this very important ordinance limiting single-use plastic bags. Our world is awash in plastic waste and we Americans generate most of it. Plastic recycling in the United States dropped from a high of just under 10% to 5% in 2021. And the reason for that is simple. Plastic recycling doesn't work. There's a lot of reasons for that, and I'm not going to go into those, but I will send them to you by email. I promise. We need to turn down the tap of the massive amounts of plastic that we use and that ends up in our environment. We owe this to ourselves, to our children and grandchildren, and to every living creature on this earth. You will hear arguments about cost and convenience, claiming that we cannot afford to change our ways. We can. People have been carrying their own bags to market for thousands of years. We can do it. And our community, our businesses, and even our tourist industry will be better for it. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, President Cook, and honorable council members. My name is Sarah Price, and I'm here on behalf of the Maryland Retailers Association, which represents retail businesses of all sizes all throughout the state. Uh, first, I would like to thank each of the council members for making time to speak with me about this issue over the last two weeks. Um, I really appreciate your commitment to gathering as much information about this proposal as you can. Uh, the Retailers Association has gotten involved in local proposals like this throughout the state and we typically do urge each jurisdiction to um, allow this issue to be handled at the state level in order to minimize confusion for consumers and businesses. Uh, beyond that, with, uh, for this particular proposal, we do have several concerns with the way that it was drafted. Um, the primary issue being that it does um, not, it does not include a fee on paper bags. Generally, I assume that each of these proposals is intended to curb consumer behavior and encourage people to bring their own bags rather than transitioning from one disposable item to another. Um, and the most efficient way, the most effective way to do that is to ban plastic and put a fee on paper. And our organization encourages that um, while allowing retailers to keep that fee. Um, I would echo the concerns that were raised by the Chamber of Commerce regarding the current um, ever-increasing cost of doing business um, in Maryland and in the world, frankly. Um, and I would note that, you know, the cost of a plastic bag is, you know, for a large grocer, it's roughly two to four cents per bag. Um, a standard size paper grocery bag that has no branding and no handles can run anywhere from eight to 12 to 15 cents a bag. So let's say Acme is able to source, you know, 10,000 paper bags for 12 cents each in, in bulk. Um, if you have 500 shoppers in a day using five bags and they, that amount of bags is used every day for a week, that's over $2,000. That, that, that ACME has had to spend on bringing bags into the business, uh, where the same amount of plastic bags uh, would be about $700. Um, and so if you include a fee on paper in the regulation, 
That both encourages customers to bring their own bags, and it also sets a fee floor so that every single business is operating at the same price on bags, um, and there's no unnecessary competition. Um, we, uh, on top of the bag fee issue, we also have some suggestions that we would make regarding the exemptions that are included in the bill, uh, both to make sure that the appropriate items are covered and to make sure that the language is as clear as possible. Um, we also have noted the lack of language regarding an enforcement method. Um, so we would have some suggestions to make, which I will follow up by email. Uh, to make sure that they're included in the bill file. And we look forward to hopefully participating in any work sessions that you might have on this issue throughout the summer. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Price. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Mayor, Council President, Council Members, I'm Melvin Thompson. I represent the Restaurant Association of Maryland, and we are opposed to this legislation as it is currently uh, proposed. And I know you have a lot of other issues on your agenda, so I'll be very brief with my, my comments tonight. But we're opposed to this legislation because it would prohibit the use of plastic bags by restaurants and other food service facilities. And restaurants use both paper and plastic bags depending on their needs for soups and saucy or wet foods that is prone to leaking or spilling plastic bags are often used to guard against bag breakage and plastic bags are also sometimes used for heavier or larger orders and many restaurants also use plastic bags because they are a cost-effective way for our industry um, to package our products because our industry has a very narrow profit margin. And alternative paper bags to suit some restaurant needs would have to be uh, thicker and more durable, and they are also significantly more expensive. Uh, a regular brown paper lunch bag, for example, may be fine for a cold sandwich, or a salad, but it doesn't really work as well for hot, steamy, or juicy foods um, because the hot product with steam would quickly make that thin paper bag soggy and the bag would fail. And with ongoing supply chain shortages of paper bags and other food service disposables, many of our restaurant small businesses continue to face supply challenges. And if the council intends to pass this ordinance, we would respectfully request an amendment to exempt restaurants and food service facilities from the plastic bag prohibition. Other jurisdictions have also treated restaurants differently in their bag restrictions and fees, including Chestertown in Kent County, uh, the city of Westminster in Carroll County, and also Howard County and Montgomery County has treat, both treated restaurants differently when it comes to their fees. So I thank you very much for your time and consideration tonight, and I will be following up with your offices. Thank you. Have a good evening. Anyone else? All right, saying no, and I'm going to leave the public hearing open, the public record open, um, probably through our next few meetings. Um, I know the council is invested in this. Um, we'll have some absences for holiday time coming up, so uh, I'm planning on keeping the record open at least until the second meeting in July. I would encourage you to reach out to us by phone, by email, however is best. Um, we want to hear from the public on this issue. It's a big one. and. Uh, you know, public in input is important. 